The golden age of soul music was undoubtedly 1964 to 1968, coinciding as it did with the careers and tragic deaths of Sam Cooke and Otis Redding, the rise of Stax in Memphis and their great house band Booker T and the MGs, plus dynamic genre-defining singers such as Eddie Floyd, Johnny Taylor, Don Covey, Isaac Hayes, Sam and Dave, Little Milton, Luther, if loving you was wrong, I don't want to be right, Ingram, Albert King, up in New York, Atlantic had Solomon Burke, Benny King, Percy Sledge, Arthur Conley and Sister Re, Aretha Franklin and Wilson Pickett. Motown had Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, Edwin Starr, Dennis Edwards and a cadre of smoother pop-oriented soul singers. By 1969 things had begun to change. Taste had moved towards an edgier funk sound. So acts like Sly and the Family Stone and James Brown continued almost as usual, except that James Brown had fired the mutinous famous flames and hired overnight the super funky JBs, and acts like Parliament evolved into the whole Parliament Funkadelic thing. Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder adopted socially conscious positions and moved on with Motown, Wonder dominating the front end of the 70s with some of the best records ever made and some acts persevered in the gut-bucket southern style until the late 70s. The finest stable of these stars could be found down in Memphis on the high record label, where a rhythm section the equal of anything at Muscle Shoals, Macklemore Avenue or Hitsville, USA would churn out. High's flagship act was Al Green, who made some glorious records. Let's Stay Together, Let's Get Married, Love and Happiness, Here I Am, Tired of Being Alone, and a wonderful version of How Do You Mend a Broken Heart. Until personal problems, i.e. a crazy girlfriend who tried to murder his ass, forced him back to the church. But Green isn't today's topic. We're looking at High's second most reliable hitmaker, and one of the premier women of soul music. She may have been a teeny weeny little thing, but she had a voice that could holler from her hometown of St. Louis, clean down to Memphis. And she had a hand in writing some of the best soul tunes laid down before the northern styles of soul, Philly and disco, rolled over all of the grit and funk. Ann Peebles was born in 1947 in Kinlock, Missouri. Seventh of eleven children to a Baptist preacher. Anne came up through the storybook route of singing in church after graduation to St. Louis Clubs in 1968, chaperoned by her brother. She visited Memphis to audition for Gene Bolegs Miller, an old school big band trumpeter who'd put together a crack R&B orchestra that all of the greats used when they were in Memphis. He was also an early hip-hop promoter playing a key role in the careers of DJ Jazzy Jeff and LL Cool J. Miller took her on board and arranged for an audition with Willie Mitchell, the fatherly chief of High Records. High wasn't like Motown or Stax, which were driven by internal and external rivalries and cliques. High was universally known for its family atmosphere, down to the fact that three of the five of its legendary rhythm section were brothers, Charlie, Leroy and Mabon Hodges, and High's encouragement for younger acts. And that's why we're here to look at 12 of the finest fruits of Peebles' tenure at High Records and how they established her as a soul singer of the highest rank. 12. I'll Get Along From her 1970 sophomore album, Part-Time Love, Peebles took a big stylistic leap forward as a singer here. Her voices darkened, had gotten grittier, and High have invested more in the production. Horns and backup singers tower behind Peebles, and Al Jackson's drumming is an object lesson in just enough. Soul music was starting to change in 1970, becoming slicker and funkier, but Peebles was a magnificent holdout to the old southern gut bucket style. Number 11. You Keep Me Hanging On not the famous Supremes hit at the Motown, but from what many people consider to be her best record, 1974's I Can't Stand the Rain, You Keep Me Hanging On sees Peebles catching up with the slicker R&B trends through a record that applies Al Green's formula to an edgier vocal style. There's a complex and impressive string arrangement at play here, and Peebles rises to it with a nuanced and winning performance. Number 10, Part-Time Love. Title track to her second album and her first ever top 50 pop hit, Part Time Love sees the distinctive high sound emerging behind Peebles, while her vocals, churchly, dirty and tough, complaining that even the dead in the cemetery aren't alone, they still have the dust to visit their bones. 
From her up and down 1969 debut album, This Is Ann Peebles, Crazy About You Baby establishes a cracking Memphis groove for Peebles to work over, with some red hot guitar from Mabon Hodges to accompany her. The debut album generally works on the original songs, but the disappointingly weak cover versions that pad it out do drag it down. Number 8. I Didn't Take Your Man. Peebles' last great fling, this ultra nasty piece of 1978 throwback soul homily, complete with a sassy bitchy monologue at the beginning, sees Anne lecturing Mary on how she didn't steal a husband away from her. Mary as good as gave him to her through not giving him the good good loving he needed. Spidery guitars and slinky strings dress up something that sounds like a Joe Tex mini opera from a dozen years hence. This one comes from the album Handwritings on the Wall, her last album with high records. Number 7. Won't You Try Me? Back to the debut for an odd sounding song, ostensibly an Otis Redding influenced soul ballad, it is dressed with an oddly poppy string and horn arrangement, a dreamy guitar line and some very inventive drumming in the bridges. The song shows off Peebles' jazzy chops and her church background particularly well. Number 6. I Take What I Want the last song on her third and I might suggest best album, Straight From The Heart. I Take What I Want is a suitably tough and assertive end to an album full of songs that skirt, not so much with feminism, but something more akin to the modern concept of female empowerment. Now it's an old Sam and Dave number, and uh, are Sam and Dave the most underrated of the great soul acts or what? Opinions in the comments, please. Off the Hold On I'm Coming album, aka the album with the worst cover art ever, Peebles slows it down and articulates it more precisely, and we get a tough, bluesy conclusion to what was a very fine album indeed. Number 5. Somebody's On Your Case Staying on straight from the heart, Somebody's On Your Case is a down-home soul stomper with a swinging sheen of Memphis groove. It's an old-school cheating song, full of salty down-home wisdom and boiling in the funkiest Memphis groove she ever conjured up. A B-side that flipped over and charted itself, it's a travesty that this record never got higher than 117 on the pop charts. The consolation is, its A-side is yet to come. Number 4. I Can't Stand the Rain Her most famous song and title track to her biggest selling album, everything about this says hit single. So its final high point of number 38 is a bit of a letdown. It made number 79 here in Australia in August 1974. But my golly it's a great song. John Lennon, more on him later, described it as the greatest song ever. From the gripping, simple riff that opens it, played on High Records' new electric timbale, to the Al Green-styled slink, to Peebles' incredibly sensual vocal. It's wonder after wonder. I guess it's at this point where an inveterate storyteller has to tell the one big Ann Peebles story. It happened one night late in February 1974 at the Troubadour Club in Los Angeles, where Lennon, Harry Nilsson, Mal Evans and Ringo were loaded drunk and Lennon kept disrupting people's show. They were diplomatically, actually less than diplomatically, escorted from the club by people's people who were neither small nor subtle. What's little reported is that Lennon fronted people the next day and made a fulsome and personal apology. This was just, however, a dry run for the Farago in March at the same venue, when he and Nilsson decided they were funnier than the Smothers Brothers. They'd ended up in a brawl that saw Lennon, who had lost his glasses, punch a woman out. The other unpleasant addendum to the story is that before he and his party were thrown out for harassing peoples, Lennon had stuck a Kotex pad to his head, groped a waitress, and said, do you know who I am? And the waitress dispatched him with, yeah, you're an asshole with a maxi pad stuck to his head. Unbelievably, I Can't Stand the Rain was another B-side that flipped and became a bigger hit than its A-side. Well, on the charts, leastways, the A-side's actually number one on this list. Number three, 99 pounds. Back to the Straight From The Heart album for a song written by Peebles' future husband and Lennon extractor in chief, Don Bryant. This was another hearty slice of vintage soul that was probably meant to come out a lot more lightheartedly than it did. But Peebles elevates with a dead-on serious vocal. She means business. She is singing Bryant's song straight back to him. Fantastic arrangement, particularly the horns at the beginning. Good things come in small packages, she hollers. At 135 seconds, that says it all about this song. 
Number two, breaking up somebody's home. It seems that I'm making out the Peebles only made one really good album in Straight From The Heart, but that's far from true. But this soul standard is the smouldering heart of that album and the A-side of Somebody's On Your Case. Again, here's an assertive woman. Oh sure, she's up to no good, but she's going to get her business fixed right and damn the sisterhood. It was Albert King who had the big hit with this, but his version is a sledgehammer compared to Peebles, which sounds dark, personal and revealing. I'm struggling to think of a record in the soul music catalogue that comes close. Perhaps Luther Ingram's If Loving You Is Wrong from 1972. Number one. I'm gonna tear your playhouse down. 1973's I Can't Stand the Rain album, Pound for Pound, is a shade behind Straight from the Heart, in my opinion, but not much. The two real peaks of the record, the title track and this, are the songs that cement people in the ongoing consciousness of the classic canon. Playhouse, a distant cousin of breaking up somebody's home, but with this more urban style and excellent guitar part from Mabon Hodges, is a cool, measured and menacing masterpiece. Peebles' phrasing is articulate but flexible, playing out the sinewy melody, weaving in and out of the stinging string arrangement. One of the very best songs of the 1970s and one of the best examples of soul music of all time. And stayed with High until they went bust in 1979, recording three more albums, including the excellent handwritings on the wall. Given she didn't want to sing disco or move away from Memphis, and given she and Bryant had a young family, she eased back, going back to singing in church. She teamed up with Mitchell again for Call Me on the Tiny Waylo label and a live album. She cut a couple of albums with Bullseye, a division of Rounder Records, including the cleverly titled Full Time Love, but by this stage she slipped into what I think is always the end stage of a once great career, re-recording old hits. In the 2000s, people became a top attraction on the Jazz and Blues Festival circuit. However, tragedy struck in 2012 in the form of a stroke and Anne retired from music. Still living in Memphis and a member of the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, Peebles can look back at a career spent doing pretty much exactly what she wanted to do and doing it very well. Soul music and the classic canon owe her a great debt.